Hey YouTube, I'm Tristan from Smart Home Point. I recently bought a ring indoor cam uh, to put in my garage, which is an outbuilding, and I don't have any internet there. So it got me thinking about the different ways that you can get internet in an outbuilding if you don't already have internet there. And I came up with a list of seven different methods you can use to get internet in your outbuilding. So I want to do this quick general video today and just talk through these seven methods that are available to you. The first method open to you is to extend your Wi-Fi network out throughout your house so that hopefully it can be reached in your outbuilding. You can do this with two different methods called Wi-Fi repeating or Wi-Fi extending. Now, although they're actually slightly different methods and how they work, they're all sold under the same bucket. So, for example, you might see routers that say they boost your Wi-Fi network or, or they extend the reach of your Wi-Fi network. And so I'm grouping these two as, as one method. So in essence, what you'd have is right by your back door, for example, you might plug in a device and this will boost your Wi-Fi range so that then in your outbuilding, you might have another device that you plug in and this can hopefully speak to the device you've plugged in by your back door. It can reach that and as a result, your Wi-Fi network is extended, your Wi-Fi range is extended and then in your outbuilding, you can actually access that Wi-Fi network. Wi-Fi repeating and Wi-Fi extending are slightly different under the hood. Uh, Wi-Fi extending is actually where your Wi-Fi network, your existing Wi-Fi network, gets extended and put up as a brand new Wi-Fi network that your devices then connect to. The Ring Chime Pro is an example of this. Your Ring cameras and your Ring doorbells will actually connect to a brand new network that's published by your Ring Chime Pro. You won't actually see this when you're actually setting up your Ring device in the Ring app. It just says, do you want to use your Ring Chime Pro? It's not going to actually say, you know, do you want to use your Wi-Fi extender device? Um, equally a, a Wi-Fi repeater such as a router or another plug-in device. That's slightly different in the sense that all that does is take your Wi-Fi network and rebroadcasts it, just like a relay tower does with TV and radio. Um, but because although they're different under the hood, Wi-Fi range extenders and repeaters, they actually look fairly similar to the end user, so I'm grouping these as one method, but they require a good way of extending the reach of your Wi-Fi network out to outbuildings. The second approach is a slightly newer or better way of doing what I just described, and it's called Wi-Fi Mesh. Uh, you may have seen this marketed as whole house Wi-Fi solutions or whole house mesh solutions, and the Google Wi-Fi system is a great example of this. This actually uses a slightly newer technology called Mesh Wi-Fi, and you have your main router, your main hub, and then throughout your house you've got different Wi-Fi points that you purchase to extend the reach of your Wi-Fi network. And this actually uses meshing technology, a bit like Zigbee Mesh or Bluetooth Mesh, to actually more cleverly extend the reach of your network. Um, it's quite cool technology because if one of your nodes, when your points fails, your mesh can sort of reconfigure itself so that instead of going from A to B, your connection, for example, might go from A to C, a different point, um, and you won't know any different. All the routing tables will just be flipped internally. And as I say, Google Wi-Fi is an example of this. So what you could do in this case, similar to the first method, is you could have a Google Wi-Fi uh, point in your back backyard, for example. And then in your outbuilding, you've got another Google Wi-Fi point that you plug in. And then, obviously, hopefully the reach will be extended uh, via this sort of mesh Wi-Fi uh, method. Um, this works fairly well, but if you find in the range just isn't good enough, maybe you need something more direct because Wi-Fi is always going to be a little bit limited, even if it's mesh Wi-Fi. So I'll talk you through some other methods as well that you can use. Okay, so the third method I want to cover is a bit of a strange one, and it's called point-to-point -point internet. And this is actually more of an expensive solution. You don't tend to see it on houses, to be honest, but it's basically where you have a, a, a transmitter on your house or, or a building, and then on your outbuilding, uh, you actually have a receiver and the internet connection gets sent from that transmitting point to that receiving point. This usually uses late radio waves such as 2.4 gigahertz up to 60 gigahertz, but can also use lasers, which is really cool. It's not like in the films where people be cut up or whatever, but you can use laser for short distances. To be honest, point to point connections have flaws in the sense they're really expensive more designed for industrial applications where you might have a big complex and different buildings on that complex and then you'd actually use point-to-point -point internet point-to-point -point connections to actually transmit that internet connection around that industrial complex unless your house or your grounds are absolutely massive then 
point-to-point -point internet may not be suitable for you. My fourth method for getting internet into an outbuilding is quite a simple standalone solution, and it's to use a 4G or 5G mobile hub or mobile hotspot as they call them. And what this actually does, it's a really small device. Uh, here it is. It's a really small device that actually has a SIM card put into it. Uh, and then you actually buy a data plan with your cell provider for, for your SIM card. And then this little device will actually act as a Wi-Fi router or Wi-Fi hotspot and it'll transmit Wi-Fi out into your outbuilding. It's completely standalone. You can literally just use it in your outbuilding and it's a completely separate internet connection then to your home Wi-Fi. It's quite a good solution. The downside is, of course, you've got to pay for a separate plan for your cell data, for your internet data for this device and you've got to buy the device as well. So if you've already got internet in your house, you might want to actually use that internet instead of buying a brand new plan. But certainly this can work really well. It's a good standalone solution and 4G and 5G internet is really fast nowadays. So this could work really well. The next option available to you is satellite internet. Now traditionally satellite internet hasn't always been that good, but due to Elon Musk, joke but Elon Musk has really improved this area which I'll speak about in a second but satellite internet it basically revolves around having a satellite dish on your outbuilding just like you'd have for satellite tv so you have a satellite dish on your outbuilding you run a cable in and then you literally plug that cable into your internet modem or internet router inside your outbuilding and then that provides internet as normal inside your outbuilding as I said at the beginning this method has traditionally been quite expensive but Elon Musk's Starlink program, which is funded by SpaceX, is a $10 billion program. This Starlink actually involves sending tens of thousands of satellites up into the sky. And then the idea of this is that you can actually pay Starlink for satellite broadband, for satellite internet. This will work by having a Starlink terminal outside your property somewhere, whether it's on your wall or your ceiling. And Elon Musk has said you literally just point it to the sky, plug it in, and it'll reconfigure itself to look at one of the thousands or the tens of thousands of satellites he's launched into the sky. We don't know prices just yet. They're going to come out later this year. Uh, I think America will be the first market this will be launched to, but this might be a really good way of actually getting internet to your outbuilding because this program will actually bring down the cost of satellite broadband a lot and it'll be cheaper and more accessible than ever before. The sixth method available to you is to actually run a hard link, an internet cable or an ethernet cable from your inside internet router into your outbuilding. This might not always be easy because it might involve running it under floors or inside walls, and then certainly you'd have to run it outside your external wall. You might then need to run it under your patio or dig a big trench through your garden, your back garden, and then eventually run it into your outbuilding. So this isn't always the easiest approach, but if you can do it, it's the most reliable because then in your outbuilding, you literally take the end of your ethernet cable and you plug it into an internet router like this, and then you have a Wi-Fi network available to you in your outbuilding. Alternatively, instead of relying on an internet router in your outbuilding, you can literally just have a network switch and then you have lots more ethernet cables coming from your network switch and go into your individual power over ethernet devices. Uh, the, the downside of this is that not that many smart products actually support power over Ethernet. Um, I know Ring Doorbell Elite does and the Ring Stick, Stick Up Cam Elite does, but most other devices don't. So if you are going to run an Ethernet cable in, it's probably better to have an internet router anyway to provide your internet. But certainly this is a good option, even though it is more complex. If you're able to do it, this is probably the best option available to you. Okay, my final option is instead of running Ethernet cable out along your house and then out into your backyard and into your outbuilding, you rely on what's called power line adapters. So what these are is they plug into your wall socket inside your house, the first one, and then you've got an Ethernet port either at the top or the bottom. And basically inside your house, your Ethernet cable will plug into this and then plug into your internet router. And then in your outbuilding, what will actually happen is you'll either have the same sort of device or a slightly smaller one that again plugs into the wall socket in your outbuilding and then obviously you connect your ethernet cable there and then from here 
is very similar to the last point. You can literally plug this Ethernet cable in to your router or network switch, and at that point you have internet in your outbuilding. This actually works, these power line adapters work by actually using your electrical cabling to actually transmit internet data. It's not always the best method if your house has very old electrical wiring, but if your house has newer electrical cabling and you don't tend to have any electrical problems, then power line adapters can work really well. The benefit of this approach, same as the last approach, is you're actually creating a Wi-Fi access point or wireless access point inside your outbuilding. And this is quite a good sort of persistent way of creating internet while still only using one internet connection and like a 4G or 5G hub, which actually has multiple internet points and multiple internet subscription plans. So if your internet works quite well, power line adapters will work pretty well for you. And the benefit of this is you don't need to rip apart your house by running ethernet cable everywhere. While on the topic of power line adapters, the other thing you can do in your outbuilding Instead of having a plug-in device which has a Ethernet port and then from here plug it into a router to create your access point, you can actually get some power line adapters that have a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. So what actually happens is you plug it in, instead of having an Ethernet port, the power line adapter actually publishes its own Wi-Fi network, its own Wi-Fi access point. This can be quite convenient if you are just planning on connecting your, connecting your power line adapter to a router because instead of that you've sim simply got a single plug-in device you don't have to worry about any extra devices or any ethernet cables okay that wraps up today's video thank you for watching it as you can tell from the seven different methods that i've covered some of them have pros and cons uh, they can vary depending on where your outbuilding is located such as how far it is from your house they also vary depending on whether you're able to get satellite internet or a 4g hub or 5g hub in your outbuilding for example, if your cell reception is not good in your outbuilding, then a 4G or 5G hub might not make sense. Um, but overall, some all of these methods can be used for different purposes. Uh, so hopefully at least one of them is good for you. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to use power line adapters when I put a ring indoor camera inside my garage, which doesn't currently have internet. This should be fairly reliable for me, but if not, I'm then going to go the whole hog and actually run an ethernet cable out of my loft because I have a network up there or run it out of my loft down my house under my patio and into my garage which will probably be a day's work so I'll try that if I can and just rely on power line adapters instead but I'll see how I get on and at least I know I've got a few different options available to me okay I hope you found this video useful if you did please click the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe thank you